Hi everybody, welcome to the video. Thank you so much for tuning in. Today we're gonna to be talking about option implied volatility and how understanding implied volatility can help us understand risk in the marketplace. Let's go ahead and get started. Hey, welcome back to all of our subscribers and a warm welcome if this is your first time here. My name is Kirk with Tactical Options Trading and we make videos just like this on a consistent basis where we talk about the stock market and options trading. We talk about Thinkorswim. We put live trades on in here. If you haven't already, I hope you'll consider clicking this button right up here and subscribing. And while you're at it, click that bell so that you don't miss out on any future content. All right, guys, let's get going. All right, we are inside the Thinkorswim trading platform and we are talking about implied volatility. You guys, implied volatility is an exciting subject. It really is because as options traders, it's our edge. We have to understand what implied volatility is because if we don't, we might be buying options at the wrong time. We might be selling options at the wrong time. If we're on the wrong side of implied volatility, it's gonna hurt and it's gonna hurt bad. So we need to understand what implied volatility is. Now, how many times can I say implied volatility in this video? I'm just warning you guys, it's gonna be a lot. So we're talking about two types of volatility when we're talking about volatility. So there's historical volatility and then there's implied volatility. So historical volatility, real quick, Really that means is that we're looking back in time and we're looking back at that stock price. We can see that in this, in this past, uh, in the past history of this stock, this stock has moved thus and such. And we can see that that price action has been volatile or not volatile. So for example, looking at Netflix here, you can see that from this point to this point looks a lot more volatile than this point from this point back. You can see that the stock was not as volatile in this area as it is in this area. And we can see that, and that's historical. The price action has already happened. But implied volatility is based on option pricing, and it's based on option buyers speculating on where that stock's gonna go into the future. So we're looking at uh, option buyers of puts and option buyers of calls. So let's say, for example, we come over here to the trade tab, and you can see that uh, we're gonna be talking about these numbers right over here on the right-hand side. now. For example, let's look at the 7 December series. You can see that this number right here, we're looking at an implied volatility of 56.70%. Wow, what does that mean? That's awesome. We know what that is, but what does that mean? You know, then we come down here, uh, 28 December series, and we look at that number and it's 49.31%. What does that mean? Well, I know it's lower than the 56. What does that, what does that mean though? Let's talk about that. So let's jump in here to these options series. We'll open this up here and we'll take a look. So we're looking at the 7 December series. And basically, in a nutshell, this number right up here that we see, this 56.70% is basically based off, an, off a, an averaging model of the implied volatility of each individual put. So you can see that in here we have each, in, or not individual put, I'm sorry, each individual strike and I'm looking at the put side and I said put, uh, each individual strike. So each individual strike has its own implied volatility. And we can see that here and over here on these columns. Now this number is derived from taking all the implied volatility of all the uh, out of the money calls and out of the money puts and adding those together and then dividing it by the number of calls and puts that are out of the money and we come up with this average. So in this example, that would be 56.70%. Now that number is derived from option pricing. So it's based, as I said, off out of the money calls and puts, and it's based on speculators saying, well, I think the stock is gonna go here, so I'm gonna buy this call, or I think it's gonna go here, so I'm gonna buy this put. And the demand on those options starts to increase and that, that demand starts to drive options pricing, which creates an implication on the market that the stock is going to move to this point or to this point. Has it really moved there yet? No, it's just traders uh, with their assumptions, they're assuming that the stock is gonna move to this point or this point. The stock may not actually even move in that direction, but it's based on option pricing and what, and what speculators are willing to pay for those options and it drives the implied volatility up. So when we're looking at uh, implied volatility, it gives us an idea of how much risk is actually in the market because we can compare that with certain other options series. So let's say for example, we're looking at box. 
Now, I don't really ever trade box, but I wanted to use it as an example. And you can see that we have earnings right here on the horizon that's uh, tomorrow. So tomorrow we have earnings on box. So let's pull up uh, box here on the options chain. And you can see that obviously, because earnings are tomorrow, it's gonna fall in this series. It's the 24, uh, 24 days out. So the earnings event is gonna happen within this option chain or this option series right here. Now check out the implied volatility here on this certain series. We got 79.84% implied volatility. Now compare that with the rest of them that are a lot lower than that. So what this is saying is that there's a lot of option buyers out there that are speculating buying out of the money calls and out of the money puts because they think based on this earning announcements that's gonna come up that the stock could actually move higher or move lower. They don't really know if it's going to or not, but they're willing to buy those options in hopes that it will. So that drives the implied volatility up. So let's take a look at, uh, I wanna show you guys, uh, you know, because we look at this, we look at these numbers over here and we say, well, are those numbers, I mean, is the implied volatility high or low? Well, we can see compared to, you know, other options series, if it's high or low. So let's say, for example, you know, we come over here and we look at the SPY and we can see that all these numbers here are relatively similar. Uh, you know, we don't have any earnings coming up on SPY. They don't report earnings. It's an it's a index. So, you know, the SPY doesn't report earnings. So we can look at this and say, well, I don't, I don't know if 18%, you know, basically across the board here, I don't really know if that's high or low implied volatility. So what we can do is come right down here to the bottom of the options chain and we have this little uh, header here that says today's option statistics. Now, when we come in here, we can see that we have a bunch of different numbers right over here on the left hand side. These are some really interesting numbers and I'm gonna show you guys on a chart what these look like to help us understand if the implied volatility that is currently in the options world is high or low. So right here we have the, uh, we have the 52 week implied volatility high and then we have the 52 week implied volatility low. Now here's our historic volatility high and low, but that's in the past. You know, looking back, we can see that the highest implied volatility was at 41.7% and then the low was at 0.08 or 8.7%. So what does that mean? Well, we have an IV percentile or you know, we could call it an IV rank too of 33%. So what does this 33% mean? It means that looking back over the last 52 weeks uh, that right now uh, implied volatility is 30 has been at 33% of the time, it's been lower than it is right now. So let's let's say take for example, let's come back over here to the chart. Um, we can look at the chart here of SPY, and I'm going to pull up a uh, implied volatility. So we can see our implied volatility right down here. You can see our implied volatility right now is at 19.19 uh, or 19%. So is that high or low? Well, right now. If we look at this number right here, this implied volatility percentile, which is 33, which is the same number that we're looking at right here, it's 33%. So if we go back in time and we look at 52, uh, 52 weeks back in time, so we're looking at our implied volatility chart, which is right down here, we're looking 52 weeks back, the highest it's been was at this point right here, and the lowest it's been was about, I'd say about right in here. So we're currently sitting at this point right here. So where we're sitting right now isn't the highest that it's been in the last 52 weeks or the last year. And it hasn't, it's not the lowest it's been. It's at 33% of where it's been in the past. So that gives us an idea if where we're sitting at right now is high or if it's if, or if we're low. Now, for example, if we come back over here to box, you can see that box has a very high implied volatility uh, percentile. So right now we're at 90% of where the implied volatility has been in the past. So we're looking back in a year's time, you can see that uh, the implied volatility, well, you, you mean you look at this right now and you're like, and you say, well, isn't this the highest that it's ever been? Uh, actually, 
It is, but it isn't because if we zoom in here, we can see that, uh, let me zoom right in here. You can see that implied volatility was at the highest at this point right here. But now we're actually a little bit lower than that. So because we're a little bit lower, we have an IV rank of 89.9. Now if the IV uh, came back up here and we're above this point, now this would be 100% because looking back 52 uh, weeks back, uh, it has not been higher than it is right now. But looking back right now, it has been higher just a few days ago uh, than it is right now. So we're currently sitting at 89.9% of where we have been in the last 52 weeks. So that gives us an idea when we're looking back here at these options chains is, well, is this high? I don't know. Is it low? I don't know. But we can look at this, you know, we can look at this IV percentile and it'll give us an idea. And if you don't have this on your chart, you can always just come right over here and get that same number right there, current IV percentile. And that lets you know, uh, based on the options uh, past where we are uh, it, for, you know, the um, I, uh, how where we're sitting at right now as far as risk. So risk really is implied volatility, if you're looking at it that way, because when we're talking about implied volatility, we're talking about risk. Now, let me come back over here to the, uh, let's come back over here to Netflix. So again, looking at this, uh, looking at this column right here on the right hand side. Now we have an understanding of what these numbers mean and how we are derived, how those numbers are derived based on options, uh, averaging those options in that series. Uh, we could see that this number is 57.07% for this series. Cool. <laughs> well, what does that mean? Well, you know, it's nice to know what that 57.07% is, but what does that really mean? Well, what that really means is it's a, it's a one standard deviation move annualized out over a year's period. So let me pull up a standard deviation table here. Pull up the standard deviation table and you can see that, you know, we're all familiar with the one standard deviation table, especially if you're a seller of options because you like to sell your options outside that one standard deviation move. So here's our one standard deviation move. And we know that 68.2% of the time, uh, the stock is going to trade inside this one standard deviation move. So let's say for example, just to make it simple, we have a stock that's trading at $100 and the implied volatility, uh, such as we saw in that column over there, the implied volatility is let's say 20%. So we're looking at a 20% implied volatility. So what that's saying is that in the future, if you take the option pricing that is based in that series right now and you take it out into the future, we're looking at a 20% one standard deviation move. Now, if we're talking about a hundred dollar stock, that means that stock could move up as much as $120 or move down as low as $80 in that one year period based on that 20% implied volatility. So that's just kind of gives you an idea and put some context around that number because if we don't know what uh, that number is, or we, don't, we know what this number is, it doesn't really help us to understand risk. So what that's saying is that over a year period that the stock could move up as much as 52 or 57% all the way down 57%. And that's uh, based on the option pricing in that series itself. So that's a one standard deviation move. So we're looking at a one standard deviation move of 57% over the next, over the of a course of a year. Now, of course, this number changes constantly based on the option pricing that is in this options uh, series. So as you know, as risk goes down, like say for example, when we're looking at box here, we could see that you know this number here is going to be high, but you know after box reports earnings tomorrow, uh, that number is going to go down because the implied volatility is going down because there's there aren't people buying buying puts and calls out of the money puts and calls. So that number is going to go down, but we can use this in comparison and look at the look at it in comparison with the other option series and realize, hey, there's a lot more risk in this series right here because if we're comparing it with the others, we can see there's more risk in that series. But to get an idea of where risk is overall, we look at that IV ranking based right here to see you know how much it's been in the past and where we are right now. Uh, based on that implied volatility in the past. So I hope that's been helpful, you guys. So I got a little story for you guys, and we're talking about implied volatility. I find implied volatility so fascinating. So 
putting it in terms of a story, I think kind of helps us understand what uh, implied volatility is. So let's say, for example, you're going to take your kids to Disneyland and you're so excited to go to Disneyland and me telling you the story, I have nothing against Disneyland. I love Disneyland, especially when there's no people there so that you can get on the rides and uh, you, can, you don't have to wait in line. But let's say, for example, you're taking your family to Disneyland. You've hyped it up so much. You're so excited about it. Your kids are uh, all excited about it. You drive over there to Disneyland, uh, fly over there to Disneyland. You got your tickets, you're ready to go, and uh, you walk in the gate and you realize, oh my gosh, everybody else had the same idea as I did. And we're all over here on fall break. We're all over here on spring break. We're all trying to get on the rides. And uh, you know, you walk in and uh, you walk into Disneyland and you realize, man, there's two hour long lines uh, to get on some of these rides and your your excitement and everything just implodes. It's just like, ah, oh, man, you know, and everybody's excitement is just kind of let down. And I, and I look at that as implied volatility. You know, we're talking about a stock and you're talking about uh, an event coming up. You're talking about earnings on the horizon. Everybody's excited. Wow, this stock is going to go to the moon. It's exciting. You know, or, you know, they had something bad in the past. I, I think the stock's going to go down. And you have all these speculators out there buying calls, buying puts. Uh, they're expecting a certain amount uh, to come from this event. Uh, same thing. If we're walking into Disneyland, we're expecting we're going to have so much fun. We're, we're so excited. We built it up in our mind so much that when we actually get there, maybe it's not as, as good as we thought it was going to be. And usually that's how, uh, you know, we're talking about implied volatility. That is, you know, our edge as options traders. So we want to be on the right side. We want to sell those options when implied volatility is high because, you know, let's face it, stock doesn't usually move as much as people want it to. You know, we're always like, this stock's going to the moon and, and it never does. Uh, you know, or, or stock starts to, to fall and people start panicking, but it really doesn't fall as far as people uh, think it's going to fall and it actually finds a little bit of a bottom and bounces and then uh, you know everybody's like okay calm down uh, but that's like implied volatility that's like going to Disneyland it's 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 the hype uh, you know the hype of an event so it gives that it kind of uh, gives us what that risk is based on option pricing now the stock again may not even move like we thought it would and uh you know might just drone along there and nothing really happens but it's all speculation and that's where that implied volatility comes from so you guys i hope this video has been helpful in, in understanding implied volatility and risk and what those numbers are on the right side of the screen if you guys uh have any questions feel free to comment on on our, on you know the comment section below and again we're talking about these numbers right here uh, i find this stuff so fascinating in understanding risk and how to to understand risk when we're trading options so if you guys have any comments please post them in the section below we'd love to hear from you we uh, love making videos like this if you think that this video could help somebody else uh, please share it with them give us a thumbs up like and subscribe thank you so much guys my name is kirk with tactical options trading we'll catch you on the next one bye bye